Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another tutorial of uh, Felis' Tupolev 154 for X-Plane 10. On today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a little trip using the VOR as well as the ADF system on the airplane. Uh, so to get us started, I've already got the airplane running, everything's uh, in pretty good shape, all the systems have been pre-set up, so you don't have to watch me do that. But uh, the one thing we don't have set up is our actual navigation. So what I thought for a little trip today is we go out to the island of Madagascar, which is in the southern hemisphere, which makes things a little bit trickier, but not too, too much in this particular airplane. And we're going to be traveling from Foxtrot Mike November Mike to Foxtrot Mike Mike India, which is Avado Airport. In case you're curious what that airport looks like, it looks sort of like this. So when we do get there, just kind of memorize what this looks like and kind of compare it to like what we get when we get there. So anyway, the um, simplest way to use this, of course, would be to use the Global Positioning System or use the NVU, but uh, we like to make things a little more complicated than they need to be. A word on that real quick is make sure you keep your flight plans simple. The more simple your flight plans are, the less things that could go wrong. But it's always important that you do provide a little bit of redundancy in case something does go wrong. So in this particular case, we're going to be going ahead and using the VOR system to take us uh, to about this point or so. And then we're going to be trying to dial in this uh, Tango November NDB, which we'll then use to help us kind of line up the runway itself. Then we'll use an ILS approach into uh, Foxtrot Mike Mike India. So it should be a pretty straightforward. I know that the weather predicts a um, pretty hefty tailwind. It's going to give us a little bit of a crosswind as well. There's probably going to be quite a bit of turbulence traveling and um, possibly even some clouds when we get down there. So it should definitely be an interesting flight for us today. So anyway, let's go ahead and get everything set up. So the first thing we want to do is we want to have some kind of system that's going to get us reliably on this course. Again, we could use the NVU, but we're going to use a VOR this time. Conveniently, there happens to be a VOR located directly at the airport. It's actually just to the northwest of the airport, but that's not really going to cause a problem. Its frequency is going to be 11250. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I'm going to go ahead and load it in right over here onto the right system just like that. I find that the left system can uh, sometimes give you a little bit of trouble because it's also the system used for ILS. So whenever I'm doing navigation, I typically actually use the right system for VORs. I use the left system for DME and ILS as well. Uh, one thing you want to watch out for is when you do use this system that when you go to program this down here, you make sure you press the VOR2 button to actually line it up. Now tuning in a radial on a VOR is a two-step process on this airplane. The first thing we need to do is we need to tune this instrument down here, keeping in mind, again, I'm using the right side VOR system. You need to first tune in what particular radio you're going to be using to lock that onto your radio. After you've done that, you have to come over here and actually dial your HSI to the correct radial as well. In this particular case, you can see we're going to be traveling 164 nautical miles on the 176 radial. We'll actually be intercepting the NDB down here, but we'll get to that in a minute. So what I've done is I've dialed in 176 here, and I've dialed in 176 down here as well. If you skip one of these steps, you're going to find that the automatic pilot does not approve, and that's going to cause all sorts of little issues later on. So that's going to be the first half. The second half... It's going to be flying all the way down to here on 385 Tango November. What I've done is I've gone ahead and gone up here and I've already preloaded 385 into this one. One thing I find with this particular system is that it works best if you actually dial the ADF into both so you're not uh, getting confused as to what needle you're actually chasing. So I've actually already done 385 on this side and this side. Now if you come down here to the actual ADF receiver, this is an RMI, you'll notice that the needles are hunting for that station because they can't. Of course, if I clicked it to VOR1, this needle is going to point right to where my VOR is, which is located directly before, behind me. So you want to make sure you have that pre-set up pretty well before you take off. All right, so we're good to take off. We're going to be taking off. We're going to be taking a right-hand turn. Now, one thing that I did find that works really, really well in this is the little checklist guy. I finally found ways to kind of work it well for me. The method that I like to use is you basically go straight down, clicking all the different ones off to go ahead and uh, uncover them as you go. So what we have here at this point is we've already done all this stuff. Before a line up, we've already done all this stuff. And now we do take off ready report. So again, just make sure that the light is extinguished and now we're good to go. 
Now before we land, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this, but we're going to get there in just a minute. So let's go ahead and take off and start climbing. Uh, we're going to be climbing at an altitude of 8,500 meters. One thing you have to kind of keep in mind when you're traveling in Madagascar is there's huge mountains in the way. So it's very, very critical that you fly high enough over them and you don't over descend and smack into one if the weather's bad. All right, let's get riding. Now we're going to take a pretty standard takeoff here. We're using... Um, the first flaps position, which seems to work pretty well. Our rotate speed is going to be about 244, 242. If you're not sure about that, just click menu, hit the tab button. You can see our V rotate is 244. So I'm um, not totally crazy. It does help if you stay on the runway, however. That right, looks pretty good. Go ahead and pull it up. It takes quite a bit of control force to get this thing up in the air, but it does come up in the air pretty well. All right, we are airborne. Go ahead and bring the gear up. One thing you have to do in this airplane, which is different from a lot of other airplanes you've probably flown, is you have to bring up the landing lights relatively quickly before you get going too fast. Otherwise, you tend to snap them off. So I'm actually going to bring those up right away. Continue accelerating. Get to about 350 kilometers an hour. There we go. Go ahead and bring that notch of flaps up. Make sure you shut off the gear after all the lights have gone out. Very important. And now I'm going to go ahead and execute my right turn, as well as accelerate up to about 450, 460 kilometers per hour, which seems to be a pretty good speed to be climbing at. Now, one thing that makes this a little trickier is the fact that the VOR itself is very close to us, so it's going to make different things a little bit more sensitive than they probably would be. So even though it shows that needle far, far deflected and I'm completely off course, I'm actually going to kind of beat it to the punch and turn out a little early to kind of catch up to it as we climb. There's about 465 kilometers an hour, so we're climbing pretty well. That looks pretty good right now. I'm going a little slow. Now you're going to start to see the needle on the HSI start to truck towards the center. One thing I'm going to double check too is to make sure these two switches are set correctly, which they are. So I'm not too, too concerned. Um, as far as the DME component of the VOR DME, since we're using the right side, that information is going to be on the right. This is actually in kilometers as opposed to in nautical miles. If you prefer to put it in nautical miles, there's a little switch right here that you can actually press that will switch it over to that particular mode. Just make sure you don't get the two confused, otherwise you're going to find that all your distances are off. On the HSR, I, you're probably noticing that the needle is starting to truck itself towards the center, which is exactly what we were hoping for. Go ahead and turn towards it. I'm not going to turn towards it too, too much, though, because I'm not quite lined up with it yet. That looks pretty good. You're going to notice that the flight director, which is this little needle right here, is going to start moving slowly towards the center as I get a little higher and higher. Uh, we'll send everything off to the automatic pilot once we cross about 3,000 meters, because I like to kind of handle this part of the flight myself. Because, I mean, they pay you to be a pilot. You might as well be a pilot at some point. All right, we're looking pretty good now. Still climbing at a pretty good speed. Yeah, notice that flight director is pretty much agreeing with me at this point. When you're flying, you want to pretty much make the experience as comfortable as possible for your passengers. And sometimes that means just flying it by hand, especially if it's in turbulent weather. But again, do what works for you. There we go. I'm going to start kind of hiking a little bit over in this direction. We're getting a little fast, but that's okay because we just crossed 3,000 meters. Go ahead and nose over to about 6 degrees or so. We're going to be accelerating up to about 525 kilometers an hour. That looks pretty good right there. I'm going to go ahead and reach over and actually activate that button right here. Once we hit 5 and 25, which we're at now, I'm going to go ahead and press the V button, which is going to climb at a constant speed. And now we're in pretty good shape. Just double checking to make sure everything makes sense. We are on 176. 176 looks good. We are 28 kilometers away from the airport we just took off from. I actually jump outside. Sorry for the noise. You can see it's way, way, way off in the distance. All right, everything is looking pretty good. Uh, we're going to be climbing up to 8,500 meters for this flight today, which uh, we're about halfway there or so. 
Um, one thing that you do want to kind of keep in mind that this is in meters. There's no way to really give yourself a warning on the feet side of things. If you ever have an issue as far as figuring out if you um, want to climb to a specific height in meters, a specific height in feet, if you actually go over to the engineer panel and turn your head to the right, there's a really handy little chart right here which kind of helps you out as far as figuring out which altitude is which when you go ahead and set your warning. Obviously, you can pay attention to just this instrument if you're interested in uh, traveling with just that instrument, but that's all right. Another thing I want to mention too, after having flown this airplane a pretty good amount over the last uh, few weeks since when it came out, is you want to be very, very careful as to trusting this particular instrument. I found that, especially on longer flights, it tends to persist pretty ferociously. So it's very important that you always kind of keep an eye on it and probably leave yourself a mental note to go ahead and update it and reset it every once in a while. The procedure I use is I just click on the menu button, hit the uh, overhead panel like this. You can see it's already kind of ready for me. Go ahead down here and dial in the specific latitude that you're operating at. It's about 16 degrees, which is indicated. By the way, you'll notice that there's this little tiny letter S here because we're in the southern hemisphere. So what you want to do is set users to ref, set correction to main, just press and hit that button for a second or so. Switch to main, switch to ref, hit that button again. Now we're going to switch over to DG mode. We just do the exact same process. Whoops. And now we're good to go. We'll be doing this again once we get to the top of our descent because we're going to want to make sure that's all looking pretty good. All right, so the next thing we're going to be looking out for is our ADF to actually start picking up the station that's located very close to our destination airport. There's actually two NDB stations that we're interested in. There's one right here, which is a Tango November, and then there's this other one, which kind of acts as a reference and also an ADF approach, should we desire, that's um, India Oscar. So we actually have both of those dialed into our system here, so we can use them both as a nice little reference for actual uh, landing approach in a little while. So at this point, we just sit back and enjoy our flight. Uh, one thing you want to watch out for too when you're using the ADF system is in the event that this was off, that needle stops moving, which can give you a false impression that you're on the correct course. So kind of watch out for that. Just make sure everything's turned on. I've made that mistake a couple times myself. No terrain up here. Makes sense. All right, looks like we have a little bit of a crosswind. Now, when you're working with windy conditions in this plane, especially if you're using dead reckoning, you actually have some very powerful tools at your disposal to help you. The easiest one is actually your NVU system. You can get the current wind right down here. Keep in mind this is a navigator's wind, so this is probably 180 degrees from which you're probably expecting the wind to be. This is kind of where the wind is going as opposed to where the wind is coming from. So don't be that guy who makes that mistake. Mistake. Another really, really cool feature is if you actually come down here, this instrument, which pretty much represents all the navigational things that feed into the different gyros and HSIs, um, shows you which direction the plane is actually traveling, in which case you can see we're going about 179, and which direction the plane is actually thinks it's pointing in. So if you want to think about it another way, this is where the plane's going. This is where the gyros are pointing, uh, telling you that the plane is pointing. This little difference between here is actually your wind correction angle, assuming everything is set up correctly. We're going to be using this wind correction angle in just a minute when we get uh, to use our ADF, when we get a little bit closer to our destination. Oh, we're getting a warning. We just passed right by our height that we wanted to travel at. That's okay. Go ahead and press H. Having too much fun. Now, um, when you're setting cruise power for this plane, I find generally something um, at this altitude anyway, somewhere around 85 or 86% N1 seems to work pretty well. If you go any faster than that, you're going to find you're going to have all sorts of warning signs when you go over speed. This is the nice thing about having an engineer, because he can kind of take care of that step for you. Unfortunately, Mr. Engineer jumped out of the plane because he knew I was flying. So um, we're going to have to deal with that. That's all right, though. All right, we're at the top of our climb at this point. Now we want to start getting interested in our descent as well as our approach. We're going to use 
uh, Tango November Victor as a way to determine how far we are away from our destination. We're not quite close enough to that station yet to start picking it up, but we will use it to determine when we need to start descending the plane. When you're descending this particular plane, I'm just going to go ahead and set this down to 2400 meters. I'll tell you where that number comes from in just a minute. When you're setting up a descent in the plane with metric units, the method I use is to take these two, this number right here, and double it. And that's how many kilometers away I want to be. So for example, if this is 8, I want to start descending at 160 kilometers. Since this is 8.5, it's going to be about, say, 170 kilometers when I need to actually start my descent. Keep in mind, if you have a tailwind or a headwind, especially, uh, let's see, what do we have right now? 270, we have more of a crosswind than anything. If you have a good strong headwind, good strong tailwind, you're going to have to take that into account and descend a little earlier, a little late. But other than that, we seem to be cruising pretty well. We could probably give it a little bit more power, kind of get us rolling just a little bit quicker. We don't want to overdo it, though, because, again, one big bump of turbulence and off comes the wings or something terrible like that. Uh, keep in mind, when we cross transition altitude, you want to go through and kind of reset all the altimeters and things like that, just to make sure everything is working the way it's supposed to be. Oh, and what did I tell you? It takes just a teeny tiny little bit to go over on this particular plane. Generally, you want to be cruising higher than this, but um, for our particular case... Ah, ooh, look what just happened. For our particular case, um, we're actually going to be going a little bit lower because we're not going very far. Just going ahead and resetting all the altimeters. You have another altimeter over here. Don't forget about this one. And we're good to go. All right, we're 261 kilometers away from our destination. We still haven't picked up the ADF, but we're getting pretty close, so I have a feeling we're going to be seeing that any minute now. So let's go ahead and pop up our checklist real quick. Before landing, on top of descent, we're not actually to this point, so we'll go ahead and ignore that at this time. We'll get there in a minute. Uh, if you are having a lot of turns, I highly recommend that you reset your gyros after each turn if you want to make sure everything is perfectly accurate, because again, you're going to have some problems, because uh, it happens. So other than that, we just kind of kick back and enjoy our flight for a minute here. Ah, it's not too bad. I guess um, if you want to go back to the old days, we could go ahead and pop this door open here and visit. Oh, all the passengers jumped out too. I don't blame them. I better go hide in our little cabin again. Uh, okay, that was fun. It's always a good idea, too, to flip over the engineer panel once in a while, make sure everything makes sense. Can everybody breathe? Is the temperature agreeable? Things like that, you just want to kind of keep an eye on. Like right now, I notice that there's positively no airflow whatsoever coming into the airplane. Oh, uh, we didn't leave a door open. Let's see what the pressure is. Hmm. That is interesting, because we are pressurized. Oh, well. Ah, I see it. Caught it. Right. So again, very, very important that you go through and check things once in a while. Still waiting on my ADF to catch. We're 241 uh, kilometers away. Altitude is 8,500, so again, about 270, oh, I'm sorry, 170 is going to be about the altitude we want to start descending at. A couple things about this plane that are kind of unique, some things that you kind of want to think about, is um, if you use the NVU system, uh, it's actually possible to use true course as opposed to magnetic course and things like that, but that requires a lot of extra little steps. There's actually a switch up here that allows you to slave this thing into the directional gyro mode, which is really, really, really fancy. You can also use the map correction control, which is located root. Uh, right over here to manually dial in or out magnetic correction which is really really impressive if you want to get that technical but again it's something probably for another tutorial I'm not going to get into because it will get too complicated I think I've gone into it too far anyway uh, taking a look outside it's uh, absolutely lovely in Madagascar it's a very untouched kind of country it's also a very very rough country because there's a lot of terrain not a lot of civilization uh, the reason I chose it today is because it's just a little different than some of the things that you probably normally find fly at. Two hundred and twenty one, everything's looking good. Wind still hitting us pretty hard from the side there. It's about four or five degrees correction. Now let's take a look at what we're actually going to be doing when we land. Oh, there's the airport. Uh, so we're going to be arriving more or less from the north, going for Point de Kier. 
at about 7,000 feet. That 2,400 meters I mentioned earlier, that's what that number comes from. We're going to be taking a very tight left turn. The distances here are very, very short for a plane of our size, but that's going to be all right. Take a short, tight left turn to uh, 114 degrees, and our ILS frequency is going to be 10950. Um, a cool tip, too, for those of you who are operating things in ADF and NDB, it's not a bad idea to take your heading bug and actually stick it on the thing that the plane thinks you're going right now. In the event that you lose your VOR, you can always reach down here and press the CS button to go ahead and lock yourself in that previous course, so at least you know you're going to be maintaining the right direction. In the event that something like a radio station goes down, you get too far, you lose signal, or you're just getting a really, really bad signal. Now, in the real world, VOR stations are not the world's most reliable reliable as far as accuracy goes. I think the accuracy is something like plus or minus four degrees. Uh, my experience with flying airplanes with them is they're usually pretty good, but every once in a while they're not. So sometimes people prefer to, instead of slaving the automatic pilot to the VOR system, instead actually going ahead and flying the whole thing uh, by using the course steer heading bug or by doing it by hand. That seems to be a pretty solid way to do it. But again, your mileage may vary. And, uh, of course, in X-Plane, everything is 100% perfectly accurate, which is kind of amazing if you think about it, because it certainly isn't in the real world, unfortunately. So you don't have to worry about that step as much. But if you were going for a smoother and more realistic experience, you'd probably want to be flying the VOR using the heading as opposed to use a slaving into the VOR. Let's take a look at how things are going over here again. Ah, things are much more reasonable. Good. I'm sure everybody's ears exploded a minute ago, but eh, they'll forgive me at some point. All right, I'm going to start my descent at 190 uh, meters, uh, kilometers rather. Just makes things a little bit easier for me. Ideally, what I find is if you use the automatic descent button here, the hold speed, it'll find a specific angle to kind of hold on its way down. After it does that, you can actually shut this off and then kind of keep the angle by hand. That keeps things a little bit smoother than relying on this, especially if you enter into a very, very strong zone of uh, high pressure or low pressure or a different wind speed or something along those lines. Just something you want to kind of watch out for. I'm going to go ahead and slow down. Go ahead and push this button right here. And now we're going to go ahead and start our descent. Let's go ahead and take a look at our checklist. I'm going to work your way all the way down from the top. Charts! Uh, we've already confirmed that a minute ago, by the way. Uh, nope, we're not quite there yet. Charts! All right, we're going to have to keep this in mind. 115.10, it's going to be 109.50 once we get a little bit closer. We're going to wait until we can get that ADF. Landing data. Looks like our landing approach speed today is going to be 260 kilometers an hour, which is pretty quick. Compass system, it's a good time if you haven't done so already to go ahead and make sure everything's correct. Looks like 17.24. All right, looks good. Perfect. Ah, we just caught the ADF. This is good news because now we can go ahead and start setting up our ILS system. All right, that is all set. Compass system is good. Radar altimeter, it's always 60 meters. This is 200 feet. Notice how the plane is kind of bobbing up and down a little bit trying to maintain that speed. That's the, what I was talking about a second ago. Often it's just easy to just go, um, yeah. Just go like that a little bit to kind of lock it at that one angle. It's going to be a much, much smoother experience for you as well as your passengers. Set, fuel quantity, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Good. All right, let's talk about the ADF real quick. So our destination ADF is slightly to our left, which makes sense. Because believe it or not, if you take a look at our little correction system here, it shows us that the difference between here and here is just about the difference between here and here, which is what we expected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the heading at, whoa, oh boy, turbulence. Yeah, it's kind of what we expected. Go ahead and dial that in right there so. Go ahead and switch to course steer mode. Go ahead and shut navigation mode on, switch that mode on. Now we're going to go ahead and set up our ILS. 14 looks pretty good. Landing mode on, needles on. It's one frequency is 109.50. So go to 109.50. It's gonna be, ah! Oh no! Hmm. 
Oh well, we'll have to see what happens when we get down there. I'm sure once we get a little bit closer and it actually detects it, it'll be a little bit more polite. Anyway, let's take a look at the ADF now. Now, the tricky thing with an ADF is the desire to keep this needle perfectly centered in the map is very, very strong. But believe it or not, that's kind of useless. Because if we do that, we have a nice strong crosswind, we end up kind of homing in where we're constantly making adjustments to keep it in the center. It's much, much safer to use this guy to figure out what your difference is, in which case it uh, looks like three degrees or so, and simply compensate off of that with that. Like for example, you can see that it's slightly to our right and this indicates that our course it's slightly off to our left. So we want to keep that in the back of our mind. Just kind of watch that needle for a minute. See how it's starting to kind of sneak to the left? It's exactly what we expected. So what we'll do is we'll actually come just slightly to the left to compensate for it, which is actually going to put the station at our right slightly. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the checklists. Altimeters, it's, uh, I think, I don't know, we gotta go look it up. I think we're coming down a little too fast, however, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and pull the nose up just a little bit. There we go. I'm just going to set that for now because I don't <laughs> have enough hands to keep on top of it. All right. So if we want to check the altimeter, we can just use the map setting, fly down to here, click on it, 3021. So we can pull out our little phone here, inch 3021. Comes out to be 1023. So we come down here, set this to 1023, set this to 1023. Looks like we need 767 over here, just like that. Scoot over the other side. 1023. 7, that needle is always in the way. 767 right there. Come over here, set it to 767 as well. Now we're good to go. All right, now it's time to check a look at our ADF and see how it's doing. As you can see, it's starting to move back towards the left again, which means the crosswind is kind of pushing us that way. So what we'll do is we'll compensate again by bringing us a little bit more onto the left to try to hold that steady where it needs to be. Kind of crabbing a little bit. But again, depending on your wind, you could actually calculate your wind because you've got this guy down here kind of helping you out and all that other good stuff. All right coming down at a pretty good speed here. I'm going to start thinking about landing. Looks good. Go back to our little checklist real quick. Uh, passing transition level. Yeah. Altimeters, nav system we set. Landing course on HSI we already set. ADF, we're actually using that right now. Automatic pilot console is set. So you go ahead and click here. So now when we get very close to our destination, we'll go through this setting right here cool. So our total distance at this particular time, we'll go ahead and um, uh, go ahead and use the VOR there, which is uh, of course 115.10. Mm. Let's go ahead and double check to see what our distance is. There we go, we're about 102 kilometers away. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our ADF situation here. So the station is actually slightly to our right, but it doesn't really seem to be moving very much, which is a pretty good sign that we found the sweet spot to keep it right where we need it to be. Let's see, it's about two degrees. We might actually be overcorrecting a little bit on account of the fact the wind is not quite as strong at this altitude. So I'm actually going to bring myself slightly more to the right here. Uh, when we get to about 3,000 meters, we're going to go ahead and have to start leveling off a little bit to slow down. We've got plenty of time to do so, so I'm not too concerned with it. This would be a good time to double check to make sure your gyros are all set correctly. But uh, we just did it a minute ago, so I'm not too, too concerned with it. Go run over to the engineer panel, make sure everything looks okay there. Uh, 
Ooh, bumpy ride. In case anybody's curious, I turned on the NVU earlier with the calculator. You can see we've actually come about 280 kilometers from our original destination. It's kind of a neat little feature there. That's only going to work, by the way, if you actually set that up up here. But um, that's fine. You can always use the NVU as a reference, and it's a really, really good reference still. So we're about 84 kilometers away, about 12,000 feet. So if we go 3 times 2, that's 6. So we're going to be a little bit early to our descent, but that's all right. We always have to slow down anyway, so I'm not too concerned about it. Now, one of the things you probably noticed on the chart on our descent here was the fact that this is a very mountainous region. So it's very critical that we keep our altitude high enough, otherwise we're going to see fit. Because as you know, if you don't see sharp, you'll see fit. All right, let's take a look at our ADF again real quick. It's coming a little bit too much to our right, which probably is because the wind is not nearly as strong as it was at the higher altitude. So now I'm actually going to center the plane on the ADF temporarily, just to get a feel for how much more correction we're going to need for it. Actually, coming over here and looking at this instrument, you can see that the needle and the gyro are basically on top of each other, which means we don't even need to correct for the wind at this particular time. Bring a little bit more to the right. Just wait until we get that just about pointing straight up. Perfect. All right, so now we're heading directly for the ADF. All right, we're crossing 10,000 feet. So what you want to do is you want to go reach over here and jam on the climb control. because so we need to level the plane off. Slow down sufficiently. Normally on a uh, regular airplane, we'd be dropping the landing lights at this point to let everybody know we're down here. We don't want to do that on this plane because we will snap them off. <laughs> we're actually going to wait until we're considerably closer to our destination to do that. So all I'm doing now is basically slowing down. We need to get to about 465 or so before we descend anymore. But you can see already how close those mountains are to us. And in a matter of fact, you're actually going to see this start to come alive in a minute too to remind us just how close some of that stuff actually is. Uh, we just crossed over the ADF, you can tell, because that needle just swung very, very, very hard. Go ahead and switch, come a little bit to the right, just so we can go ahead and get that needle directly behind us. There we go, perfect. Right, we've just about slowed down enough. Again, you can improve this process if you want to use your spoilers and things along that line. I usually find that you just don't need to, though. All right, we're going to continue with our descent now. Oop, there we go. All right, 20 to 25 not kilometers. We still have about 62 kilometers to go, so we have a little bit of time. And in just a moment, we're actually going to level our aircraft off because we want to keep about 7,000 feet above ground. Or about 7,000 feet, I should say. Ooh, very bumpy down here. Pretty big clouds, though. Go ahead and flip on that other uh, NDB station. Ah, there it is. So now this NDB, if you took a look at the chart a little earlier, is right here. So this is actually when this NDB is more or less pointing straight to our left at about the 9 here, that would indicate that it's, uh, the runway is directly to our left. So we got to kind of keep an eye on that as we're going down here. Yeah, we actually got to come a little to the right kind of drive that needle back to where we want it to be. Uh, when this needle shoots straight to the left, it means the runway is directly on our left. So we have to kind of keep that in the back of our head. Go ahead and level that just a little early here. Bring our power back in. Ah, bad visibility. Everybody's favorite. Oh, look at that. Uh, we've just received the ILS. It's uh, locked in. Uh, which is great news for us. I don't know why that's not working, but okay. 114 degrees. Let's go ahead and double check everything real quick. 114. The frequency for the ILS is 109.50. Double check it's 109.50. 114. We don't want to be on nav mode. We want to be on landing mode. We are in pretty good shape. We're getting a little slow. Add a little bit more power here. Uh, now, as the expression goes, we wait. <laughs> Give us just a little bit more power here to try to keep us roughly at the uh, safe speed for this altitude. We'll come down again in a minute once we get within 30 kilometers. Ooh, those are some pretty big mountains. Again, very, very, very beautiful country. If you haven't flown here yet, it's great for VFR flights. Just keep in mind there aren't too many runways to land at as you kind of cruise around. 
So something just to think about when you're planning your next flight out there. Go ahead and give that a quick little wiggle. All right, just uh, take a look at our ADF. You can see that the other ADF station, we were, uh, NDB, I should say, that we were following is directly behind us now, which is actually what we wanted. And you can see that the runway, if you remember, the 305 is roughly over here to us. We're going to keep an eye on this because it's going to start kind of trucking this way, and that's going to be indicative of us getting ready to take the turn. So even if the ILS system doesn't work because for whatever reason this doesn't want to adjust, I'm sure it's something I did. I apologize. I'm sure I'll put an annotation on there when I realize what I did wrong. Uh, once that occurs, oh, look at that. We're starting to pick up information already. That means this thing's going to start moving very shortly, which means i got to start slowing down. We're going to try to slow down quite a bit here. We could actually activate approach mode now if we really wanted to. But um, we're going to kind of hold off on that for a minute. Big thing now is I just want to slow down. Go ahead and take a look at our checklist again. All right, spoilers armed. Stabilizer setting is good. Radar altimeter setting is good. Okay, so we're going to wait for that in just a minute. Really, really got to start slowing down. We're at a pretty steep angle to the runway itself, so we may want to think about turning into it a little bit, which isn't a bad idea at this point, especially given that the NDB is kind of on our left now. So I'm going to turn the plane just a little bit into it. Coming down, we can actually activate our first notch of flaps. There we go. Drop the landing lights. That's good. Give ourselves a little bit of power at this point. We're a little high to where we need to be, so I'm actually going to give us a little bit of a descent. You can see the NDB station, since we took that turn, is now kind of behind us on the left. We just got some glide slope information. You can see we're below the glide slope, which is kind of where we want it to be anyway. Continue our descent. Trying to get our speed to about 350 kilometers an hour or so. We will be using the automatic throttle as we approach. All right, that was our warning. We're waiting for about 7,000 feet, though. We're not interested in meters this time. All right, that runway is going to be right on our left in a moment. That's good. All right, since we're on approach, we're going to activate the automatic throttle. Bring down our next notch of flaps. Approach armed. Runway is right there on our left. Gear down. We're going to start slowing down to approach speed of 260 kilometers an hour. Swinging around. Underneath glide slope, our localizer goal is a little to our left. Flaps full. And now we can go ahead and commence our last couple landing checks. Checklists. All right, flaps and slats down. Stabilizer position, we didn't need to change it because our center of gravity didn't change. Landing gear is down. Rudder and elevator limiters, don't need to change those. And landing lights, landing lights are already extended and ready to go. Click, 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 click before landing checklist complete. And you guys can see straight ahead, there's our runway itself. So everything seems to be going pretty well at this point. Now, if I know anything about this particular runway, I know that it's going to be a little turbulent. <laughs> but that just makes things more exciting for us, of course. Glide slope and approach autopilot are armed. Go ahead and swing around. One thing you want to kind of keep in mind when you're approaching with this aircraft is to once in a while kind of take a peek over here at the alpha, which is uh, basically your angle of attack indicator. Seven degrees seems to be kind of the sweet spot for a lot of airplanes, and you can see we're hovering about seven degrees now, actually a little fast, but that's okay. If you see this thing hanging around nine degrees when you're stabilizing for a landing, that's probably a bad sign. 
There we are. Alright, we'll go check a look at our engineer panel, make sure everything's looking good before we land. Looks good. Landing lights good. Glide slope looks good. Localizer looks good. You're going to start seeing terrain appear up on this map in a second as we get a little closer. Speed's good. Our angle of attack is actually slightly low, which might uh, mean we're going to have a slightly long flare. So it's just something to kind of pay attention to. It just means you're going a little fast, which can be corrected by coming over here and, you know, very gently hitting that button a couple times. You can definitely see some turbulence, which is sort of what we expected. So we're going to be a little harder on the landing, most likely, than um, we usually do, but that's okay. Whoa. One tricky part about this plane with those engines sitting over that tail is it gives you a very, very strange polar moment of inertia. You know, the plane likes to kind of wander and wallow, which is kind of why it has a stabilization system on it that it does to kind of make these things a little bit safer. Uh, in the event that we want it to kind of take over by hand, it's going to be wiggling just as much. So sometimes it's just as well to let the automatic pilot kind of do the work for us. And there's a big old cloud in the way anyway. And now we wait. <laughs> I love that. Uh, just a quick review before we do set down. Oh, look at that. The ADF is pointing right where we expected it to. Just a couple things to quickly review. Um, when you're using the ADF, make sure you've tuned to the correct frequency. Make sure the ADF is on. And then remember, you can always use this instrument in conjunction with this down here to make sure you are on the proper course and you're um, correcting for the wind correctly. When you're using the VOR system, um, you want to make sure you dial it in both this place here as well as in the HSI of the thing that you're going to be using. You can actually change which HSI to reference the VOR with this little handy dandy guy right here. So you could actually put VOR2 over here, programmed it over here, and then swung it back over to number one. Another thing, make sure you guys are always keeping an eye on your gyro settings. You want to update those pretty much. I find that it works once every 150 to 200 kilometers, or if you do a lot of aggressive turning, you're probably going to want to go back and reset those as well, because otherwise you're going to have a lot of problems. This is especially true if you're using the Doppler system, because you're going to find yourself in a pretty bad way, pretty lost, because of how quickly that instrument will process. Like even after this landing, it will have processed, especially if I hit the ground as hard as I expect that I'm going to hit hitting the ground. A second. All right, we're pretty darn close. Everything's looking good. Just make sure your gear is down. Make sure your flaps are down. Make sure your landing gear is set. Make sure your speed is set. Make sure your uh, minimums are set. We don't really worry about minimums because this would have been a visual approach anyway. And we'll take over in just a moment anyway. Oh boy, that is some turbulence. Nothing this plane can't handle. I feel sorry for those folks who are watching this video who get seasick, because it's kind of what it reminds me of. I should say air sex, seeing as we're flying, we're not on a boat. Uh, the method, by the way, for uh, shutting off the automatic pilot is a couple different ones. There's a big old button here that you can press that will actually disable it. You could reach down here and mangle those buttons if you want. But um, as scary as this sounds, my method is basically to give the controls a quick hard wiggle, because that seems to kind of shut everybody off. You can't just hit one of the trim buttons like you can on a lot of the other planes. And of course, if you have an autopilot disconnect button ready to go, you can go ahead and use that button as well. Remember, there's an autopilot for both uh, roll as well as pitch, so you have to disable both of those. Ooh, it's just a little windy today. It's all right, though. Of course, that poor flight attendant's probably chasing her little tray around because they didn't tell her to pick up. There we are, a little fast. Very high. That's kind of what we expected, though. All right. As usual with this plane, when you go to flare, you actually have to kind of push forward to keep the thing actually from... There we go. Ooh, that was a little hard, but that's okay. Like I said, we we're going to float a little bit because our approach speed was a little high, but that's all right. All right, I hope everybody enjoyed the tutorial. I'm not 100% sure why it wouldn't let me tune that VOR, but we were able to improvise regardless, and I hope you guys enjoy the plane. Thanks.